What we are doing today is review some of the key studies sarcoma that dictate the present management of the soft tissue, uh, soft tissue tumor, and uh, we give a focus on immunotherapy as one newer modality is undergoing study in sarcoma at present, as you have seen today in uh, the most of the solid tumors. Sarcoma um, are a family of uh, uncommon mesenchymal tumor. A few years ago, our colleagues from the Memorial Sloan Kettering did a did a nice review, uh, wrote a nice book, uh, um, and made a nice overview of all the kind of sarcoma and management of uh, all the subtypes of sarcoma. Uh, they kept this nice picture from their database of the MSK. They studied 9,000 of the patients present in their database, and as we can see, uh, the more frequent rest, liomyosarcoma and the liposarcoma, uh, followed by the other kind of uh, subtypes, of 40 subtypes. Uh, the incidence of soft tissue sarcoma, it's uh, 13,000 uh, new cases per year in USA. Uh, less than 1% is in adult cancers and 15% in pediatrics. Uh, the gist uh, are not they are recognized, uh, as you may know, uh, as a sarcoma. Uh, the incidence uh, is still underestimated because of the um, immunohistochemistry and the pathology. At least there are uh, 3,500 to 4,400 cases per year in the USA. As many as 10% of uh, uh, autopsies uh, have microgist in one series. There is a lot of misdiagnosis rate in non-expert centers, and it's at least 10 or 25 uh, percent. There are two big classes of sarcoma. Uh, one, or it's a single specific genomic abnormality, one with single specific genomic abnormality, uh, with uh, somatic translocation, point mutation, like CKT in GIST, and uh, catenin, beta catenin in uh, some desmoid tumor. Uh, tumor suppressor gene uh, in the neurofibromatosis uh, and APC. And there are uh, the other classes is uh, composed by multiple complex genomic aberrances uh, uh, like the liomyosarcoma and the UPS. Uh, ever growing like uh, you know like the the gene uh, the genetics it grow in the solid tumor is growing also in the sarcoma in sarcoma field we have a list of more than 200 sarcoma gene alteration uh, that, uh, that, uh, that 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 has been discovered in the last few years um, the good news uh, uh, for treating this kind of tumor is that uh, if we understand a few, a few types uh, uh, of this um, tumor, you can understand many of sarcomas. The, the gist is uh, the, 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 the most important uh, thanks to the uh, advent of imatinib, sunitinib, and regorafinib in metastatic setting, and the three years adjuvant imatinib for intermediate and high-risk primary disease. Liomyosarcoma, UPS, liposarcoma, and synovialosarcoma are the, uh, the different type of sarcoma. Uh, so let's start with the treatment. Is there a best first-line therapy for metastatic soft tissue sarcoma? Is the combination chemotherapy better than a single agent chemotherapy? And can we or should we lump together all soft tissue sarcoma in this analysis? Um, the adjuvant chemotherapy for the, um, for the primary localized sarcoma is definitely indicated in some, in some subtypes like the Ewing sarcoma the osteosarcoma and the rhabdomyosarcoma. For most other subtypes, uh, uh, the chemotherapy can improve the local control but, uh, and the time to relapse, but without overall survival benefit. Um, sometimes the chemotherapy, the toxicity of the chemotherapy uh, outweighs any potential benefit. Um, the standard of care, as we said before, for the Ewing sarcoma is the protocol by VAC, uh, i.e., uh, cycle every two, three weeks, uh, two weeks in children where possible, no, no, not, proved, uh, not proved benefit in adults. Uh, in the osteosarcoma, cisplatin plus doxorubicin is the backbone. Uh, and the MTP, uh, uh, where is available, not, not yet in the US, but yes, in Europe. 
Uh, I phosphamide uh, at not, has been shown no more activity in the adjuvant setting, and the methotrexate is uh, used in the younger patients despite lack of randomized data. data. Uh, the rhabdomyosarcoma is like the Ewing. Uh, usually we use the back IE or the increased in ductinomycin cyclophosphamide for pediatric subtypes. Um, in adjuvant setting, the largest, largest single study showed no survival advantage uh, for the typical protocol doxorubicin um, i the AIM study. Uh, the ERTC study in recruited 351 patients between 95 and 2000, uh, 2003. Five cycles of doxorubicin 75 and i 5 grams every 21 days. Uh, the interim analysis showed uh, that there were no difference in RFS, RFS, and also in overall survival. Uh, the hypothesis that adjuvant chemotherapy improves recurrence free survival and overall survival so, uh, was rejected. However, um, there were a meta-analysis uh, performed in 2008 and that showed an improved, improved survival for ephosphamide-based uh, therapy. Um, it was the, large adjuvant, the largest adjuvant study compiled at that date. Um, he compared 18 trials with 1953 patients. Uh, as you can see, the overall the hazard ratio for any chemo was 0.77, with the docs only 0.84, and with the association 0.56. Um, general suggestion too for the for the adjuvant therapy is that uh, it might be benefit uh, of some benefit in uh, uh, patients by uh, between 40 and 50 years old. There is no clear beneficial in the younger patients or in older patients. Uh, some histologies clearly do not benefit uh, of chemotherapy like ASPS, clear cell sarcoma, solitary fibrous tumor, uh, hemangendotelioma, and others. Uh, the first line chemotherapy for metastatic soft tissue sarcoma was, uh, uh, was decided, let's say so, in, uh, in the RTC study uh, that was published on Lancet Oncology by Judson. Um, it, in compare, it made a comparison between the single, single agent doxorubicin and the association with diphosphamide. Um, there were stratification by age, by performance status, uh, liver metastasis, and histological grade. Uh, the progression free survival and uh, the, the, as you can see from the images, actually, there were in the um, there were a difference between the, the the, doctor, the mono, monotherapy and the association therapy. The, the toxicity was obviously worse for the association, uh, but the disease, uh, disease were worsened in, uh, in, uh, in, the monotherapy, in the monotherapy arm. Um, which is so the best first line treatment for the metastatic sarcoma? Are there symptoms from advanced disease. If yes, combination regimens might have better chance uh, of symptom alleviating response. If no symptoms, the single agents are reasonable. Uh, we, have consider, we have to consider um, more uh, the sensitivity to chemotherapy based on, the sub, on the, of the specific, specific subtypes. There are uh, the sign of yellow sarcoma that are more active, more sensitive to diphosphamide. The myxoid round cell liposarcoma that are more sensitive to the trabectidine, angiosarcoma to taxane, liosarcoma to anthracyclines, uh, sorry, my Italians and English, it's worse, and the carbazine, <laughs> uh, and also um, try a protocol to, uh, with uh, gemcitabine. Um, many randomized trials are ongoing, uh, testing the first the, the, the efficacy of uh, other association in uh, first line um, metastatic soft tissue sarcoma. Uh, so, as we have seen, uh, the RTC study showed the small benefits on PFS. The study associating doxorubicin versus doxorubicin versus uh, plus polyphosphamide was negative. The study uh, with doxorubicin uh, versus doxorubicin trabectidine is, uh, is accruing, so, but and the results are still pending. 
the association with the TH302 is accruing, but still pending. The, 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 the comparison between doxorubicin and aldoxorubicin uh, has been uh, has been positive at the beginning. The results of the phase three are pending, but um, few rumors show any dif show, show no difference in uh, in uh, toxicity and uh, response rate. But after doxorubicin and fosfamide, what we do, what do we use? Uh, there are mm, some publication, uh, some phase two and phase three uh, trials that show a, a great uh, efficacy of the gemcitabine and docetaxel uh, in combination in the uterine liomyosarcoma. Um, also the association of the gemcitabine and carbazin, uh, as you can see. Um, the gemcitabine and the carbazin has been tested by the Spanish group uh, and uh, showed a better uh, sur survival um, rate in, the, in second line metastatic soft tissue sarcoma, above all in terms of uh, uh, overall survival. Uh, as a later line therapy, there is a great unknown. No clearly defined agents um, except the pazopanib and the trabectidine that has been uh, approved in Europe, in Europe and now also finally in USA. We can usually find at least one sarcoma subtypes with some activity for novel agents. Um, this picture, this slide is just to show the, 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 the study, the pilot study that uh, allowed uh, Pazopanib to have the FDA approval for the uh, second and third line uh, um, metastatic soft tissue tumor. Um, the study was designed uh, all soft tissue tumor uh, except the liposarcoma in um, a ratio two to one. The primary endpoint was a PFS, the secondary points overall survival a response rate. This was the, 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 uh, the, the response. In terms of PFS, there were an, a, a clear improvement uh, um, with the pazopanib, but in terms of uh, OS, there were not. There are some current randomized uh, trials after the first line uh, therapy in advanced soft tissue sarcoma. One is lyo in, a, in the lyo or lipo uh, subtypes, the carbazin versus trabectidine is accruing and the results are pending. Um, the carbazin versus eribulin is accruing and also here few rumors show a, a clear efficacy and also uh, a less, less to toxicity for um, uh, the eribulin arm. Other novel agents um, that we can use and that are ongoing, uh, that are ongoing uh, in phase two and phase three trials uh, are the association with uh, doxorubicin and anti-PDGFR, gemcitabine, docetaxel plus morab004 morphotech, gemcitabine plus or, more, uh, plus or minus uh, pazopanib, Immunotherapy, uh, Tricon 105 uh, plus the Pazopanib in a phase one to study, Notch inhibitor and KPT uh, 330 that has showed um, um, an efficacy in uh, Ewing sarcoma and in, uh, in, uh, in uh, endometrial stromal tumor. Uh, in case of disease specific study, we can, uh, there are the ongoing are the gemcitabine, uh, docetaxel bevacizumab that has been, that has been negative, the IGF, uh, IGF1 are in Ewing, and uh, the ponatinib and metastatic gist. Uh, I don't want to touch, uh, a little is because it's late and uh, I think for you it's too much, and, uh, and also because there are, it's just a, there are just a few hypotheses about about the immunotherapy on the on the um, on the sarcoma. We have just uh, we we can give just a big overview of what we are doing uh, um, in the sarcoma immunotherapy. Uh, there are two hypotheses. I don't have any idea of what target antigen is, and so um, non-specific immunotherapeutic agents are tested, like anterferon, muramil, tripeptide, and IDO, or I know which is the target antigen, and I can use vaccination and uh, active T-cell therapy. What is going on in the, in, uh, in the sarcoma lab? Uh, 
test, uh, the vaccine are tested uh, so that are peptides or charged in dendritic cells, passive immunotherapy with the monoclonal antibodies. No sarcoma, there is no uh, sarcoma class specific target, but maybe uh, we can use the V, the anti V, the VHF uh, in, uh, in the angiosarcoma. Uh, T cell therapy. Um, it's chimeric. It's in the case of patient T cell training and expanded ex vivo. Um, let's go on. Um, it's a nice. This is a nice uh, uh, things to say. Dipilimumab um, that has shown so um, results in the melanoma has been tested in such uh, in a, in few uh, in few sarcoma like the endothelial cell uh, sarcoma and the synovial sarcoma giving uh, some hope in the stimulation uh, of the immune system um, let's go on it's too long we have the gist then <laughs> Um, in the, um, the cancer germ cell antigens and the SS18, SS SS6, uh, need a mention because uh, because uh, give um, some some results and some uh, uh, expression in synovial sarcoma. Uh, example are the NYEs01, the beige and lage antigens originally cloned and used patients uh, um, sera against libraries of patients with tumor mRNA. MRNA uh, and they represent a change in the regulation of a large number of X chromosome genes. <coughs> um, phase one clinical trials in Japan are tested uh, with vaccine against SIT and SSX peptides. Pilot studies with uh, ipilimumab uh, had shown no response. Thank you. <laughs> hmm. It showed no responses. Um, T cell generated ex vivo against the NY is one where useful in a fraction of patients with sarcoma uh, for about four and six and in melanoma. This is a case of responding patients. Um, a final immunological approach can be um, done by the IDO um, that, um, that interact in the first step, in first step of the tryptophan uh, catabolism. It depleting, uh, uh, depleting the, catab the tryptophan is a permissive for cancer growth and is immunosuppressive. Um, the interferon paradoxically induces uh, IDO and so balance uh, the inflammatory signals. And it's one of the the, the target of the immunotherapy, the immunotherapy that uh, is going to be tested. DTT, let's go on, let's go on. Probably there's no results. The standard cytotoxin and target therapy are fairly well defined for many sarcoma subtypes. Antigen specific and independent cancer immunotherapy is in its uh, infancy yet. Uh, sarcoma studies lag behind those of other disease. Synovial sarcoma, synovial sarcoma and myxoid round cell liposarcoma are the two prime targets for, uh, for immunotherapy uh, approach. Um, since the translocation sarcomas have so few mutations, perhaps the highly aneuploid tumor will be uh, the best target for the immunotherapy. IDO inhibitors could be combined with any of these therapy. Epigenetic agents, we are far from that now, are another potentially exciting route to pursue, uh, perhaps the always in combination with um, immuno, immunotherapy. Let's talk about GIS now. Uh, the GIS are the most common GI sarcoma. The, uh, they represented 0.2% of all the GI tumors, but, on, but the 80% of all the GI sarcoma. Uh, they have they present a distinct clinical and isopathologic entity. The highest incidence is, uh, is uh, between 40 and 60 years old age. Similar male female incidence. Many are misclassified, as I said before. The clinical presentation is variable, like with pain, uh, anemia, anorexia, nausea, and uh, perforation. 
the G subtypes are in function of the of the mutation of the genetic mutation. 80% of Gs present the kit mutation, most of them exon 11 with the codon 557-558 mutated and exon 9 less than 10%. Uh, PDGFR mutation represents the 10% of Gs, exon 12 the most of them and the less frequent are the exon 18, the 842V uh, that are the more resistant, resistant, resistant to all kind of treatment. Other subtypes that represent less than 1% are the SDH, the RAF V600, and so on. Uh, before the arrival of dimatinib, but these were all the chemotherapy trials that were uh, mm, performed that were performed in the GIST patients. As you can see, none of these uh, treatment, except a little the doxorubicin and association of the maid, gave any response. Uh, any response. Uh, the GIST is believed to share several characteristics with the inter interstitial cell of Cajal. Um, typical is the expression of the CD34 and the CD and C kit. This is the receptor structure, the kit receptor structure and the phenotype. Uh, this, uh, this is a list of the clinical trials that uh, allowed, uh, allowed in, uh, dimatinib uh, to have the FDA approval. The most important was uh, the Van, Oster, um, Van Osterholm in 2001 that apparently uh, it's true that uh, showed no, uh, no, um, no response uh, in terms of uh, complete response, uh, but the, over re the overall response was more than 50% if we think uh, uh, according to the CHOI criteria. Uh, the phase three trial of the SWOG uh, of the U.S. intergroup um, compared the, 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 the posology of dimatinib uh, 400 versus 800. The analysis showed that there were no difference between the, the two doses, but with a, um, with a bigger toxicity, obviously, with the 800 the tox, um, posology. Uh, according to the NCCN guidelines um, for the patholo pathologic assessment of GIST, uh, the morphological dynamics is a, it's a, requisite, it's a standard of care. Uh, the technique uh, included the immunohistochemistry and the research of the genetic mutation in CKIT and PDGFR alpha. Uh, the tumor size and the hematoidic rate um, inform about the prognosis. The pathology report should include an uh, all the location size and uh, uh, assessment of the mitotic rate. Um, this is just a slide to show you uh, how is the imatinib response in function of the tumor genotype. As you can see, the exon, the exon 9 responds better to the 800 milligrams. And in the other side, there is no difference in, pozole, in, the, in the response rate for the exon 11 and the other uh, mutated. Um, the neoadjuvant imatinib has been given uh, an approval in uh, three settings, uh, neoadjuvant setting, adjuvant setting, and metastatic, uh, and the metastatic one. The neoadjuvant setting is, uh, the neoadjuvant imatinib is used, uh, is considered for unresectable or borderline resectable tumors, tumors that would require extensive multivisceral resection or potentially resectable metastatic disease. Uh, the first study that uh, showed the efficacy of, of the, um, the neoadjuvant uh, treatment was the uh, RTOG um, phase two trial that compared the, uh, that compared the uh, patients with preoperative um, imatinib versus those that did not receive the treatment. Um, these are the results. The surgical complications were very few. Uh, a retrospective analysis was performed also by the people for, of the MD Anderson, 11 patients with locally advanced primary tumor. Uh, they had one complete response, eight partial response in uh, preoperative. All 11 patients underwent complete, complete surgical, surgical resection. Um, the medial follow-up was uh, 20 months and all the 11 patients were alive. Um, let's go on. 
the neoadjuvant treatment is feasible. Uh, the resection should be considered following a radiographic indication of response after at least from six months to two years of treatment. But currently, currently there is no consensus on the use of the neoadjuvant tra treatment. I don't think so, but uh, generally doctors use it. Uh, the adjuvant setting um, has been uh, the, effic the efficacy of the matinib in adjuvant setting was uh, showed by the, the two studies of the ACOSOG that allowed the approval in the intermediate, in the intermediate and the high risk uh, GIST. Uh, the patients were randomized in the matinib versus placebo. Uh, the, uh, the American study um, um, gave the matinib uh, for three years, but the Scandinavian study, um, uh, no, the, the American study gave uh, the imatinib for one year, and the Scandinavian study randomized patients uh, uh, treating them for three years. Uh, all the results showed that at least three years of therapy appears effective and safe. Uh, the patients that uh, benefit most from the adjuvant imatinib are those that, that with the high risk and intermediate risk. Um, therapy, in, the, in, the, in case of progression, the, the therapy can be decided in function, in function of the type of progressions. We can uh, distinguish, uh, we can. Uh, we can think about limited or nodular progression and that it can be treated with uh, local therapy and widespread progression that can be treated by uh, increasing imatinib to 800 milligrams or sunitinib or inclu inclusion of the patients in a clinical trial. I go on with the, with the local treatment. The sunitinib has shown efficacy uh, in the second line, the, in second line metastatic just after failure with imatinib, um, with, um, uh, with a median uh, 27 weeks uh, of, uh, of the TTP uh, versus the placebo that showed a, a TTP of, uh, six, uh, um, of six weeks. Um, let, uh, no, I wanted to. How I go there? Oh, okay. Um, third line patients uh, resisting to imatinib and sunitinib, the big revolution of the last year that allowed also the, the FDA approval for the um, resistant GIST was the regorafenib in a progressive disease. Patients in, this, in, in the GRID study were randomized uh, in two arms, uh, regorafenib plus best supportive care versus placebo plus, plus best supportive care. Uh, these were the results. Uh, the, uh, the, PFS, um, the PFS was a kind of, was a different uh, in patients uh, assessed by the investigator and by the central review. But that's it's not so important. The overall survival in any case was uh, similar in the placebo and in the treatment arm. Other agents for imatinib resistant GIST are those listed are in phase one or two um, try in phase two mm, setting and a lot of things are still ongoing. Thank you so much and sorry for being so long.